Time to look for the papers for you this morning. Join me the former Cabinet Minister Michael Portillo and author Polly Courtney. Good to see you both. Good morning, Steve. And we'll kick off, Polly, with you, should we, in front of the Express and this news about energy bills? To yes. Possibly. Yes, come well, down. this is good news um, for those vulnerable customers who, um, who sit freezing in their, um, in their flats in the middle of winter. They, um, they will hopefully be £100 better off, or on average, we will be, because of a new um, rule that says that energy customers must basically tell. Um, energy companies must tell their customers if they're on a deal that's not best for them, which is great. Um, and already they're coming under fire. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put, put myself out there and probably make myself very unpopular by saying I feel a little bit sorry for energy companies who can do no right mm. in that, well, you see the headlines. Right, right. Yeah, I, I, know, I know no one's going to like what I say. But actually, um, energy companies obviously are complying with all this and they're going to tell people, oh, you could be on rate B, which would save you £100. But they're already coming under fire for not doing enough and not telling people whether there is a better deal elsewhere with competitors. And I just think, why should they? You don't get that in retail where someone, a shop will say, I oh, think you could get it cheaper down the road. You don't get that in any other industry, so why should they? Well, that, that could well be a fair point. But in all of this, Mike, I mean, people have been getting in touch this morning saying, well, if there's a better deal with British Gas, for example, why don't they just put you on it? <laughs> Well, I kind of agree with Polly, actually, that we, uh, we ought to shop around ourselves. But I think the point that many people make is that actually their bills have doubled since 2002. So if they're coming down by £100, kind of big deal. The Independent, Polly, Rick Santorum, the man who came from nowhere in the States, really, to, to be the main challenger to Mitt Romney, finally decided he's had enough. Yeah, he's had enough. And um, let's be honest, he, was, he never really had a realistic chance of, um, of winning against Romney, um, and so he's left it, you know, one horse race, uh, or two horse race when it comes up against, um, when he can, comes up against Obama. Um, but I, if, you, if you look into the, um, the article, that the, this article, um, it actually implies, it hints that there's, um, there's more going on, and actually um, it may have been partly personal reasons that caused him to pull out. Um, and he, he's got a, a three-year-old daughter with um, a genetic disorder, and it just made me think that um, actually that the, the strain it must put on you, I mean, you, you must know to some extent, to, to run for something like this and kind of put yourself out there. It must be, you know, physically and mentally and psychologically exhausting for, for you and the family. And I just think um, it's, you know, not a big surprise that he's pulled out. Actually, inexplicably, my own, my own uh, election attempt never got the global <laughs> coverage. Uh, <laughs> Did uh, not? No, no, I don't know why. Uh, this health and safety myth squad is yes. a great story. Yes. Um, well, so the um, Health and Safety Executive, which in the past has been criticised for um, imposing some rules on um, uh, children playing conkers and having to wear goggles, and uh, candy floss being banned from fairgrounds in case people impale themselves on the stick, um, and, and such risks as this, um, they've set up a, um, a, a myth squad to, uh, to do exactly that and, and uh, banish those myths um, around what, really, what the rules should be. And I just think, do we really need a squad? To, to advise on this, can we not just apply a bit of common sense? Probably. Does it not occur to you that the myth squad is a myth? It, well, maybe. This, it, no, this is just a bit of spin, isn't it? Let's face it. Well, this, yeah. But the problem is, though, when it comes to health and safety, local councils do really go mad on this, don't yes. they? I mean, they just yeah. over import everything. Well, I was in Spain the other day, and there was a little girl who had eaten her candy floss, and she had the stick, and she probably nearly stuck it in my eye. So, well, um, you should be careful. I should be, be careful. Yes. Yeah. There should be stronger regulation. Yeah. 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 You should have had your goggles on. My <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the Mail, page 19. Um, the honey trap, Britain's bees. The be all and end all, this story is, because... Uh, you could be a headline writer. Uh -huh. <laughs> because apparently... Well, I mean, people know already there's a big problem with bees. The bee population has fallen. For the first time, a university study has put a figure on this. Now, if instead of bees, we have to employ human beings in our orchards to go around pollinating our apple trees and our pear trees with uh, little paintbrushes, uh, presumably making a buzzing sound as they go, this would cost 1.8 billion pounds in wages, and that's wow. the equivalent of 60,000 nurses or teachers, according to this study. So what we have to do is we have to plant uh, bee-friendly uh, plants in our garden. Mm -hmm. Things like primroses? Them. Absolutely. Um, I couldn't continue uh -huh. the list. It's very good. <laughs> Primary, well, this could be the, the, um, the unemployment situation we have. I quite like the idea of fields of people being... Uh, workers instead of bees. Yeah, workers instead of bees. Mm. I think yeah, they could solve two problems in one. Well, Charlotte likes bees. Well, we were talking about, I have to get bees for the bottom of the garden.
child next year, but I wasn't so sure. But after reading this, perhaps we should actually. There perhaps yeah, is a responsibility to look after some things. Well, you should get your own honey and make your own So it does have its, yeah, it does have its bonuses. Yeah. You have to cut those things though with makeup in the yeah. morning. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Polly, to the Sun, Westminster is women's work. Yes, or Westminster is women's work. Um, and uh, this, is, this is basically saying that um, although obviously women make up 51% of the population, they only represent 25% of Westminster. And um, that needs to change. Um, because obviously if you have a disproportionate representation at the top, then you, you have a disproportionate impact on the, um, the policies that go down and filter down to the, to the people at the bottom. Um, and I wonder how, and it, the article doesn't say, but I wonder how we're going to do that. Because obviously it needs to change in the same way it needs to change in the city. And does, it need, does it really need to change? What about meritocracy and all of this, Michael? I mean, people who, you know, people who want to stand for Parliament will stand for Parliament. It shouldn't matter if they're male or female, should it? I think parties have to make a special effort. They have to have special measures in a temporary way. Because I know that in the Conservative Party, a lot of women think there's no point offering themselves because they're not going to get selected. I'm afraid they're quite close to being right about that. So I think for a limited period, you have to have special measures like all women shortlist and things like that. The things that the Labour Party did, actually. And then once you've got over that hump, uh, then you can go back to that. And in fact, just encouraging more women <coughs> to, to even think about yes, it. Yes. Because that, that's where the barrier is. It's the mental kind of, I couldn't do that, I wouldn't get in, I wouldn't stand up, you know, I wouldn't stand up to the pressure, and, and I wouldn't be able to have a family and all those things. And if you can get over those hurdles, then um, you get more people, more, de more supply of women, and therefore you don't need to sort of introduce quotas. But is that, it's an argument, isn't it, to say if you had an all-women shortlist for a seat, or indeed an all-male shortlist, whichever way you look at it, it doesn't, you, you may not end up with the best candidate. Yeah, that, that is a possibility, but... You, that, that, that's but, with the assumption... But I have to take the broader view that over a period of time, you would improve the representation of the people in Parliament. And I think, actually, that is what the Labour Party has done to give them credit. One of the problems in the Conservative Party is that nearly all the selection committees are dominated by women. And women, I'm afraid, are less likely to choose women. Yeah. Yeah.